Hey ladies, it's the Holy Woman Conference. It's finally here. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. It seems like I've been counting down the days forever and it is finally here. I am super excited to be here with you today. Cannot wait to get this party started, guys. Listen, I have so much to say to you today about fear. Fear has been one of my biggest opponents my entire life. Literally since childhood, fear has dogged my steps. But today, we are going to talk about how to eradicate this enemy, get rid of it. And it may try to come back as a weapon, but it will not prosper. Okay, so by the time we leave here, we're going to have five steps to kick your fear to the curb and face your Goliath. Today, we're going to define our Goliath as fear, okay? There may be some other things in our lives that are troublesome, that are causing us problems, maybe things attacking us. So we'll we'll call them Goliath too, but overall, the message today is about fear. So before we get started, first of all, I want to say thank you to Ty Young for this opportunity to share with you today. I am so honored to be on her platform it is a privilege to come before you. I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the, the sound quality of this video. I pray that it's good enough for you to hear. I pray that you get everything out of this message in spite of the fact that I'm recording in a space that has it's very open. And so it tends to be kind of echoey, but I apologize for that upfront. Hopefully you can just get the message and get the meaning and feel my heart behind this message because truly this is something that is near and dear to me. I love seeing people get set free. I love seeing people get that nugget of wisdom that they need to move on to the next phase of their life. That excites me. It lights me up on the inside. And so my prayer for you today, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. I thank you for every woman watching live. I thank you for every woman that will watch the replay, Lord God. I ask for your blessing on this message, Lord God. I sit down so that you can stand up big in me, Lord God. I am decreasing so that you can increase, Lord God. None of me, all of you. I thank you, Lord, for the blessing upon the women watching, Lord God. I pray that as this word goes forth, that it will bear much fruit in their lives, Lord, that it will be an inner witness to them, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit would enlighten their eyes, Lord, and help them in gain understanding on how to defeat their God. Alliance, Lord God, and moreover, how to defeat the enemy of fear so that nothing is off limits to them ever again, Lord God. And I pray this in your son, Jesus name. Amen. Now, you know how us women are, and I'm no different. I'm pretty particular. So there's this hair that we're going to adjust right here. There we go. I don't know if it was bothering you, but it was, it was kind of bothering me. So there we go. Okay. <laughs> It's just a thing, y'all. Just please forgive me. I'm so extra. I really am. I'm extra when it comes to being on camera. But anyway, guys, listen. This past year, I'm positive I don't have to tell you how challenging this past year and a half has been for all of us. We're going on almost two years since the pandemic hit. And I have gone through every possible emotion on the spectrum. I'm talking everything from happy, sad, mad, glad, angry, fearful, uh, you name it. I've gone through every emotion. And what I know is that God created us with emotions, so he's okay with that. It's what we do with our emotions that makes the difference. It's what we do with those things that are bothering us, that causes us trouble. And so today... If you will allow me, I really want to unpack for you some things about fear. As I stated in my opening statement, you know, when I was young, I began to deal with fear head on very early. Um, I'm going to say probably around the age of four was when fear really started to creep in along with some other things like rejection and abandonment uh, because my father, my biological father, and my mother divorced when I was four, and I never saw him again after that. Now, this is a man who, I was the apple of his eye. He loved me, he nurtured me, he cherished me, he affirmed me, he was there in my life as a, as a central figure, all of my growing up until I was four. And then when the divorce happened, I didn't see him again. 
And for a, a little four-year-old girl who was close to her father all this time, and for him to suddenly just go away unknowingly, not knowing why, not having a reason, not being able to, in, in, in your young mind, you don't know when people disappear how to take that. So typically what happens is you experience what they call abandonment, which is just what it sounds like, someone abandoning you, and you get this inner feeling of fear and loneliness and dread on the inside because you don't know what to do with those emotions. And typically what children do is they start to take it on the inside of themselves and they begin to blame themselves about the other parent leaving. And I'm positive that's probably what happened to me. So when it comes to fear, uh, fear is something that I was well acquainted with from a young age. And, you know, the thing about fear is fear is a bully. It's a bully. It comes to intimidate and it comes to stop your forward movement so that you remain stuck in a certain place in your life. But how many of you want to get stuck today, unstuck today? If there's anybody watching that wants to get unstuck, stay tuned because you're going to want to hear the rest of this message, okay? So today I'm going to read a little bit out of the word. Uh, this all came about as a result of reading about David and Goliath. I think we're all familiar with that story from Sunday school. If you are grew up in church like myself, if not, most people are still familiar because they've heard it, you know, in certain circles talked about David and Goliath, David and Goliath. OK, so out of first Samuel, the 17th chapter. Now, when you finish this, this talk, if you'll do me a favor and just pull aside for a moment with God and get your Bible, uh, preferably. I, I, listen, I advocate for everybody that I speak my messages to to get a physical Bible. If you don't have one, it's a good idea to get one, especially now while they're still available. I believe there's coming a time in our society where we won't even have Bibles available. They're going to outlaw Bibles. But for now, while you can still go to Walmart or your local store and get one, grab a Bible, order it online, amazon.com. It's wonderful. They have Bibles, okay? But for this message, I'm coming out of 1 Samuel 17. And I would love for you to pull aside and read that entire chapter. But for the purpose of this message, I'm going to focus on verse 49. So let's turn to verse 49. Uh, 1 Samuel 17, 49 reads like this. And this is out of the New King James Version. It says, then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. And hopefully you got my handout. Um, I did send a handout ahead to uh, the organizer so that you guys could have something to follow along with. So there's an, a handout that goes along with this talk. So hopefully you already got it. But it says, then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone. And he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. Wow. Now, this Philistine that they're talking about is the famous Goliath, the giant who was intimidating the people of God. He was intimidating the children of Israel. He was threatening them and he was saying that he was going to destroy them and that he would take out any man who dared to come and fight him. Send me somebody. I don't care who it is, he said. Send out a man, and if you, if you send him out, I'm going to annihilate him, I'm going to rip his head off, and I'm going to destroy him right in front of you. He was taunting these people. These people were sitting there thinking, oh my God, and they were deathly afraid of him. They were not only were they afraid of him, but they were telling everybody who even thought they wanted to go near, don't do it. <coughs> this guy is the real deal. He will kill you. He will hurt you, okay? So... Here comes David. Now, prior to this, David was just a lowly shepherd. He was a shepherd. He tended sheep. That was his job. But this is the thing about David. Not, he wasn't just your ordinary shepherd, okay? He was the type of shepherd that would kill. If a lion would try to get to the sheep, he would take the lion and rip it apart. If a bear tried to come in and get into the sheep pen and kill the sheep, he would kill that bear, barehanded. Okay, David was bad. He was no ordinary shepherd. He was a warrior shepherd, okay? So he knew how to get the job done when it came to protecting the sheep. So here's David. He's been sent down to uh, go to the Philistines uh, camp 
and see his brothers and take them an item. And so he gets there and he starts asking questions because he hears all this ruckus going on about this Goliath dude. Who is he? Who is this person they keep saying they're so afraid of? I mean, that everybody is just up in arms about. Obviously, Goliath was making a big impact with these people because they were just up in arms about Goliath, okay? So he gets to the camp and he starts asking questions. Who is Goliath? What is he here for? Why is he threatening us? Et cetera, et cetera. And David's like, Shh. so y'all scared. <laughs> and, and so then David says, look, I tell you what, I'll go fight this dude. If y'all not willing to do it, I'll go fight him. Okay, because I'm not scared. I have taken out lions with my bare hands, bears with my hands. Surely I can take this uncircumcised, Philist uncircumcised, excuse me, Philistine that is threatening you guys because I'm not scared of him. And so he was talking to King Saul at this point. He was king. He was ruler over the nation at that time. And so he was talking to Saul and explaining that he wanted to go and fight Goliath. And Saul was like, are you sure? Are you sure? Sure. Because this dude is big and he's ferocious and he will tear you apart. And David's like, I got this. Trust me. I got this. So we've identified fear as the enemy. And by the way, if you see me looking down, my notes are down here. So don't, don't get concerned that I'm distracted with something else. I'm not. I, my focus today is you, okay? Fear is the enemy. So we've identified fear as the enemy. Your agreement, however, with the spirit of fear is the entry point that the enemy uses to hinder, stop, and control your destiny. It's, a, it's like a door. Fear is the door that allows him entry into your life. And so anytime we operate in a spirit of fear, and I'm talking about in any area of life, I'm talking about any area of life. If you get a diagnosis from your doctor, your first human inclination is to be fearful. But what I would encourage you to do is not get into fear. Shift that fear over to God and get into faith. Because anytime you come into agreement with the spirit of fear, it is an entry point that the enemy uses to hinder, stop, or control your destiny. I use faith for everything. And the reason I do that is because I don't ever want fear to drive my decisions. I don't ever want fear to drive my choices. I don't want fear to drive and control how I operate in this world. So I choose to shift that fear over to God give it to him, surrender it to him, and I enter into faith. I do it with every transaction. Everything I do, I use my faith because I don't want fear driving the bus. So you're not here in this conference because you didn't have any other options to spend your time today. I'm positive about that. You didn't spend your money for a ticket because you couldn't find anything else to do with your money today. I'm pretty sure of that. No doubt. You, like many others, have had some challenges. We all have, okay? We have consistently been challenged. We have consistently been challenged over this past year. And so I know that we're all coming from a place where we are trying to overcome the giant of fear. Ever since the pandemic hit, there's a spirit of fear that has operated, that has just been free-flowing around this world. It comes through the media. It comes through social media, all kinds of ways. People's conversations are fear filled. So we're not going to let fear be in control anymore. And whether it has been financial, relational, mental or emotional or spiritual, the crisis of fear can stop us from overcoming and entering into our promised land, whatever that looks like for you, whatever promise God has made you. It can stop you from entering in into that land of abundance that God has for you. It might be financial abundance. You're, you're starting a business or you're in a new career. It may be relationship abundance. Maybe you desire to get married or you're already married and you want God to anoint those relationships so that you can prosper. Whatever the promised land looks like for you, there's a remedy and fear has to go. So let me tell you why we allow fear to hang around. 
These are just a couple of reasons. One of the reasons we allow fear to hang around is because we think we can't get past it. Somehow we've convinced ourselves in our mind that we can't get past this fear. There's no way to overcome it because it's been with us for so long that we start to wear it like a comfortable, like, you know, those old comfortable sweaters that you have. You don't want to get rid of it because it's so comfortable that you just wear it and wear it until it's, it's the elbows are raggedy and it needs patches and it has holes in it. I got one of those. Sometimes that's how we wear fear. I can tell you that's my story. I, I wore fear like a badge of honor. It was almost like fear was my constant companion until I got tired of being afraid. And I said, look, fear is bullying me. I don't want this in my life anymore. And I started to fight back. And I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. So that's one reason, because we think we can't get past it. Another reason that we put up with fear is because we of the things that we consume in our eyes and ears. I just talked about the media. I just talked about social media. Some of the things we watch, like the news. Guys, I stopped watching the news back in 2010. I stopped watching the news because my brother, I had a, my youngest brother was murdered. And one of the things that happened was the news cameras immediately showed up at my mother's house to interview her after the death. And they're very insensitive. They don't care about your family. They don't care about your grieving process. They don't care. Literally, he was not in the ground. He was not, he had not passed away 24 hours yet. And they were already putting the cameras in my mother's face, asking her these personal questions, exploiting her grief and pain. Not only that, they got some of the details about the incident wrong. I just decided, you know what? The news is not something that I want to invest my time in. It really isn't. There's always a spin. There's something they do with news called a spin. And there's always a spin on the news. So I stopped watching the news. If you watch it, no condemnation. I'm just saying for me, that's where I am. Okay. Social media has its place. We all do Facebook and Instagram and all these things. But even social media sometimes can be negative. And if you consume too much of it, you're going to find yourself in a place of fear. Because there's always something there to provide you with some fuel for the fear. Okay. Um, television. I don't even know. I do not own a television. I don't watch television. Some people think it's weird. I stream uh, shows or movies or things that I want to watch, but I'm very particular. That way I can pick and choose. I don't just have to consume, consume, consume because it's on a screen. I'm very particular about what I put in my eye gate and my ear gate because Listen, my oil is precious. My my mind is fragile. I can't take everything in. And if you are dealing with any type of mental, if you're dealing with depression or anxiety or fear or anything that tends to get you caught up, try taking a fast from television, social media, um, the internet for a while and see if it doesn't impact you in a positive way. Because I'm telling you, those things can become so toxic and they can feed into mental illness. They can feed the fear. They can fuel the fear. Okay? So these things are on 24-7. Don't you plug in 24-7 to those things. Be very careful about what you consume. So that's the number two reason why we get caught up in fear. The number three, because of our circle, the people that we hang with, the people that we call friend. Sometimes our circles can be toxic, y'all. I'm sorry. Sometimes there's people that we know full well that they are toxic and that if the more we interact with them, the more toxic we become. There is a statistic that says that you become the average of the five closest people in your inner circle. Think about that for a minute. Examine your inner circle for a moment. Who are the five people that are closest to you that you're always on the phone with? You're always hanging out with. You're always um, having conversations with the people whose advice you take, the people that you go to for advice. Who are those five people? And ask yourself, is that a good average or is it a negative average? What kind of mindset are they working with? What kind of conversations are they constantly having? Are they constantly gossiping? Are they constantly full of bad news? Are they full of fear? What's going on with that? Because you don't want to get caught up in a situation where your five people in your inner circle are averaging out to zero. 
Think about it. Something to think about. Now, I'm not saying cut them off. I'm not saying unfriend them or any of that. You may want to limit your access. If they ask you why you've limited your access, just say you're working on something really personal, which is true. You're working on you. Okay? Just a little advice. I'm not trying to get in your business, though, girl. Don't even listen. Don't let me stop you. But anyway, just some nuggets for your consideration. So let's talk about the solution because we didn't talk enough about fear. I'm tired of hearing about it. I want how do we overcome this fear problem that we have so that we can live this abundant life? How do we conquer our Goliaths? How are we going to slay him? How are we going to get rid of him? Okay. How do we combat and get rid of fear so that we can once and for all enter into those promises that God has for us? Let's talk about it. Number one, follow along on your worksheet if you have it. Hopefully you do. Identify your Goliath. So we talked about fear being at the top of that list, okay? Fear is like that Goliath that we really need to get. But there's some other things too that we're dealing with. I mentioned depression. I mentioned anxiety. Maybe it's debt. Maybe debt. You know, when you're going up against an an unseen enemy, it is very important to give it an identity. Say what it is. Call it out by name. But for some, we got multiple stuff. It might be debt. It might be sickness. It might be a diagnosis. Some of you may be dealing with infertility or barrenness. Somebody, somebody might be dealing with instability just in your life in general. If that's your Goliath, name it. Say what it is. A lot of times the reason we can't get out of situations is because we won't acknowledge it for what it is. And it's time to stop playing. It's time to say what it is. If you have an addiction, it's time to name that thing. Some people don't believe they have an addiction. But can I tell you that overeating food can be an addiction? Can I tell you that internet can be an addiction if you use too much of it? Can I tell you that sex is an addiction? There are so many things that we can be addicted to. And those are the Goliaths that we are going after. Those are the things that we are trying to remove from the equation so that you can live the abundant life. Okay, so whatever that is, whatever that enemy is, I'm going to encourage you to get still, sit down, get unbusy for a moment and write out a list of things that you are fighting, things that you've identified along with fear as your Goliaths. Fear and then whatever else is is hindering you because it has to go. We're not going into 2020 with no Goliaths. We're not going into 2020 anymore, going around the same, same circle, the same cycle over and over again. We're not doing that anymore. We're not dating the same kind of men that we've been used to dating, men that only end us up in bed and in trouble. We're not doing that no more. We're not dating counterfeits. We're not out here just sleeping with guys just because they cute, just because they pay for things, just because they offer us compliments. We're not doing that no more. We're not overspending anymore to the point where we get ourselves in so much debt that we can't even see tomorrow. We're not doing that anymore. Those are Goliaths. They need to go on your list. Say them out loud. Because you need to face that thing. It's time to stop play play. It's 2022, guys. First of all, who would have ever thought that we would have got this far over into the 2000s? But we're here now. And I can tell you that we're closer to the coming of Christ than we've ever been before. So it would behoove all of us to get whatever business we need to get done out of the way. Get it done. Take care of it. Handle it. So we can live good on this side of heaven. It's great that we're going to go in the afterlife, but we want to experience some goodness while we're here on earth. Okay. So name your Goliath. Include details. Listen, one of the things I've also learned is that you got to be detailed about this thing. Include details like the relatives in your family that also fought this same enemy. Some of us inherited stuff. Some of us things got passed down to us. Did those things come from your grandparents? Did they come from your parents, your aunts, your who who in your family had the same problem that they did not kill off? So therefore it it passed down to you. And this is not the blame game, y'all. This is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about identifying generational sins that have now crept in and caused the curse in our lives. Okay. 
That's what I'm talking about. Most, most people call it a generational curse. I call it generational sin that then has passed down and turned into a curse. Okay. Either way, it got passed down. We're not passing it down to our kids. We're not passing it down to our grandkids. It stops with us. It may have started in your family, but it stops with you. Okay. That's what we're doing. So we, we send all of those types of unwanted gifts right back to where they belong from the pit of hell back to the devil. But before we do that, we also got to do number two. So number one was identify your Goliath, your fear, and whatever else comes down under that. Number two is gather your five smooth stones. So when David was getting ready to fight Goliath, he had the opportunity to use Saul's armor to go into this battle. But what he found was the armor was too big and it wasn't fitting him well. And he was like, I can't fight with it. What, what is this? I can't fight with this on. It would be like borrowing your girlfriend's dress, okay? And it's too big. Wait a minute. I can't go out in this. I can't go to the, not the club, Jesus. We didn't stop clubbing, but wherever. I can't go out in this. David was wearing armor that was too big for him. It didn't fit. So he said, uh-uh, no, I, I need a different strategy because this ain't working. So your five smooth stones is going to be your strategy. These are the things that you're going to use to participate in the process of getting rid of your enemy, fear, and all of the things that it's causing in your life. These are going to be the practical everyday tools that you're going to, you're going to use so that you can partner with God to defeat your Goliaths, okay? This is spiritual, but it's also practical. Please know that there are just some practical everyday steps that you're going to have to take that get to get you on the other side of fear, to get you on the other side of whatever you're dealing with, okay? So maybe you need to create a budget. Maybe your financial Goliath is caused because you don't sit down and actually count out how much money you have during the month and where it's going to go. You might be saying, well, I don't even have that much money to count out, so why would I create a budget? Listen, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. OK, so start with the little bit that you have and budget. Maybe you need to start exercising or eating better. Well, I don't know how I, don't, I wouldn't even know how to eat healthy. I don't know what healthy eating is. Nobody in my family has ever eaten healthy. We have soul food and soul food and that's it. Listen, you can make healthy soul food. They got cookbooks with healthy soul food recipes in them. I mean, we can make an excuse, but. You can either make an excuse or make a difference, but you can't do both. You're going to have to pick a struggle, okay? So maybe you need to see a therapist. Maybe you need counseling. Well, I don't have the money. I don't. It's too expensive. Listen, this year, because I've had so many crises, one after another after another, I mean, literally, y'all, I can't tell you, within the span of two weeks, my relationship fell apart, I lost my job, and I got sick in a span of two weeks. And it threw me into a major mental health crisis. I didn't know if I was going to make it. I was like, Lord, what is going on here? Just It seemed like my whole world started caving in. And when that happened, I decided I needed some mental health help. So what, I, what did I do? I went online and I found an online therapy company that had a, um, a list of therapists that would work with you and the cost was extremely affordable. And I went and got myself some counseling because I knew I needed. If you need to go to counseling, don't make the excuse of not having the money. Listen, you can find the money. Stop eating out, stop getting your nails done. If you need to skip a couple of hair appointments, if you need to not buy that new pair of shoes, whatever you gotta do, make it happen. Get you a therapist because I can tell you it's worth the investment. It's worth the investment. It is worth the investment. I can't say that enough. I am here today speaking to you because I decided to invest in my own mental health. Had I not took the leap of faith and decided to reach out and get help, I don't know if I would still have my right mind because I literally was going through hell on earth and I knew that it was the enemy trying to drive me to an early grave. I knew that's what was happening beyond a shadow of death. When you have several things that hit you all at once, back to back to back to back to back, 
that's an attack. That's an attack. So I took some practical steps. I took spiritual steps too, don't get me wrong. I did much praying, much fasting, all of the things I needed to do spiritually, but I also took some practical steps to help get myself to a better place. And I'm encouraging you to do the same. If you're in that space, don't be afraid to ask for help. So this is the portion of the fight where you get to do things in the natural that will help you win the spiritual battle. I chose the number five, obviously, because the number of stones that David uh, took into his bag, he took five smooth stones. So I chose five steps to conquer fear. But the number five also represents something. It represents God's grace. It represents his goodness and it represents his favor. The number five. All of those amazing things in the number five. How awesome is that? So when we're in the midst of a fight against fear, we need all of those things. We need God's grace to empower us. We need his goodness to go before us, to remind us of our place in his sight. And we need favor that allows us to have the opportunities that would remain closed to us otherwise if we didn't have favor. Favor is going to get you that job interview for the job that you've been applying for. Favor is going to open doors for you that you've been trying to open over and over and you couldn't do it on your own. Favor will do that for you. Even, listen, 50 other people apply for a job before you did, but you got hired. That's the favor of God. Some of you need the favor of God on your life right now. It's going to allow you to open up that business bank account that you need in order to get your business started. When typically they'd only accept clients that have good credit, A1 credit, or have been in business X amount of years. It will help you get that business account. Fear, however, is the liar standing at the door saying you can't have it. You can't overcome this. You can't do that. You can't get to this. That's what fear does. But when God gives you a strategy... When he gives you those five smooth stones, that's your strategy. When he gives a strategy, he might ask us to do several things that seem really small or little or like don't make sense. But it's that act of obedience that brings the favor. It's that act of obedience that brings the favor of God on you. He's not asking you to make you look dumb or silly or to confuse you. He's asking you because that act of obedience will be that one thing that's going to help bring you the victory. That one thing, y'all, don't skip steps, don't skip instructions, whatever he asks you to do, get those five smooth stones and use them to help walk you into your promise. So this is why it's important to sit down and get quiet before God and ask him for that strategy because there's victory in the steps. All right. So number three, the number three thing to do is to put on the whole armor of God. This is something that most Christians overlook. We just think it's a cute little, it's a cute little Thing in the Bible, put on the whole armor of God so you can stand against the devil. Well, let me tell you, the armor of God is a strategy, y'all. The armor of God is powerful. It's not just a spiritual, something that sounds really good to do. It's actually something that will protect your very life. Ephesians 6, 13 through 18 is where you'll find the scripture about the whole armor of God. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to read 13. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, taking the shield of faith. It didn't say taking the shield of fear. It said taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then after that, it tells us something else. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Well, listen, this armor is important. I put mine on every day, y'all. I put mine on every day. I try to remember that I did forget today. So here we go. I'm not perfect. But your spiritual armor is that thing that covers and protects you daily from the attacks of the enemy. Now, does that mean he's not going to try Absolutely not. He's going to try it. Okay. But just like any good soldier fighting a war or in an army, you're not going to dare go into that battle naked. How much more when you're battling a spiritual battle, should you keep on your spiritual armor? The scriptures, listen, have them scriptures ready all the time. If you got to post them up on your wall, that is armor, y'all. The word of God is armor because you need it. 
that helmet of salvation, you need that helmet on your head so those thoughts don't get in and invade your mind. Those lies that the enemy comes at you with don't, don't come in and tell you the wrong thing and have you off on a path that God didn't create for you. That's why you need that helmet of salvation. When you wake up in the morning, put on your armor. Use this scripture. Use Ephesians uh, 6 and put on the armor, even if you have to read it out loud. It will help you. And don't just put on one or two pieces. Put on the, it says put on the full armor, the whole armor of God. Okay? So you need it all from head to toe. All right? This is a prayer strategy, again, that most Christians don't use, but it is needed. It will make a difference. It will make, you'll see a difference. You'll feel a difference when you put on your whole armor. If you skip a day, if you miss it, if you forget, that's one thing. But try to do it as often every, daily as possible. As Do it every day when you wake up in the morning, preferably. Before you get your day started, put on your whole armor. It'll help you. Trust me. Just listen to your big sis. It'll help you, okay? The fourth thing that I want to share with you about kicking fear to the curb, you need to gather your weapons. You need to gather your weapons. Now, armor is one thing. You don't fight with armor. You put armor on. But your weapons, that's a whole different thing. Now, if the enemy has weapons that can form against you, that means that you need to have weapons that you can use against him. And your biggest weapon, I can tell you, is prayer. Prayer is your biggest weapon. In that same chapter, in verse uh, chapter 6 of Ephesians, in verse nine, uh, 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Supplication just means requests, basically. You're making a request of God. So it's, it's letting us know that prayer is a weapon that you need to pray, you need to use at all times. You can be praying at your desk at work. Now, I'm not saying out loud, but you can be praying on the bus. You can be praying in the car on the way to work. You can pray as you're sitting in the line to wait up to pick up your kids. You can pray in the shower in the morning. Some people say, I don't have time to pray. Yes, you do. Trust me, you get real creative when you know you need to pray. You can pray when you're in a crisis, right? You can pray when you need something. Pray daily, pray often, and pray at all times. Find those opportunities to pray. Because nowadays we can't afford to be lazy with the prayer. We can't afford to be, be lazy with our prayer life. We have got to get that in our heads. Prayer is a weapon. Prayer and praise are a weapon. Pray early, pray often. Remember, it's a two-way conversation. Prayer isn't just asking God for a bunch of stuff. Prayer is also letting God speak to us, speak to our hearts. You say, well, I can't hear God when he speaks. Yes, you can. You can hear him in here. God speaks in here. He don't speak in here. He speaks in here. What is the thing in your heart that comes out when you pray to God? When you sit and get still, what is what do you hear in your heart? See, this is a skill that you need to develop is hearing in here. Not in here. This is your head. Your head is going to tell you things that sound rational, things that sound like, you know, coming from you. When you hear from your spirit, it's a whole different thing. You might hear stuff. You're like, what? what in the world? God has said things to me after prayer that I'm like, really, God? Did you just say that? Because it blew me away. It blew me away. I was like, Lord, he is serious about this thing. Yes, God is. He's serious about his daughters. He's serious about all his children. But he has a soft spot in his heart for us as his daughters. Let me tell you. So two-way conversation, y'all. Not just one way. All right? Um, he is always speaking. He's constantly speaking, but we often aren't hearing him because we are not listening. We don't take time to sit and just listen. After prayer, one of your strategies should be to sit and listen because God may give you a strategy to knock Goliath right on out the, out the box. He might give you that one word that says, mm -hmm, this is how you're going to defeat that problem. This is how you're going to overcome this problem. This is how you're going to get to your kids. This is how you're going to help them overcome that problem at school. This is how your finances, this is how you're going to be able to bring your finances back in order. God speaks, y'all, but we got to be listening. And then finally, number five, we're almost there, guys. Be persistent. Be persistent in your prayer. 
continue your spiritual disciplines, continue to pray, continue to read your word, continue to get still before God. Be persistent until you see the victory. Be consistent. I have Galatians 6 and 9 in here. I have Galatians 6 and 9. Let me see. Let me go to Galatians 6 and 9. Thessalonians. Uh, Galatians always. Here it is. Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. In due season. Some of us are in a due season. Some of us are in the season of our lives where God is getting ready to pour out some blessings that we prayed for two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. But if we lose heart and we faint and we give up, guess what? We're, we're not going to see the increase. We're not going to see the answer to our prayers because we gave up too quick. Don't get weary. Listen, you may get tired. I understand. I've been there. You might get frustrated. You might be like, God, this is not doing me any good. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm not saying, listen, don't get weary in well-doing. Your due season is upon you. It's here. Keep pressing. The fact that you are at this conference right now lets me know this is your due season. See, a whole lot of people had an opportunity just like you did to sign up for this conference, but guess what? They passed. You know why? It wasn't their due season. But you are here right now in this moment watching me on this video voluntarily. And I can tell you that it's because this is your due season. So don't get weary in well-doing because your private prayers will be publicly rewarded. Your private, the prayers that you prayed when nobody else was looking, it was three o'clock in the morning, you cried out to God, you got on your knees every morning, you prayed consistently, God heard and he, sh he will answer every one of those prayers. So consistently take time out to pray, read God's words, speak good things over your life. It's going to pay off. You're going to be tired, but that's just the human side of you. Have I wanted to give up? Absolutely. I'm sure I did give up a couple of times, but I got right back on track. God is faithful to bring those small bits of confirmation. And he's done, listen, I've had so much confirmation in the last couple of months. I'm like, Lord, okay, I hear you already. <laughs> Because he's getting ready to bring such an increase. And it lets us know he is on our side. He's working on our behalf to bring us to our Jeremiah 29, 11 moment. Everybody know what Jeremiah 29, 11 is? Let me, let me read that to you real quick. And this is my last scripture for the teaching. Jeremiah 29, 11. I should have it memorized, but I'm going to read it. That way I don't miss any, any parts of what he's saying. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 says... For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God is all about your future. He's all about filling you up with hope. He's all about ripping that fear right out of your life, but he's gonna, it requires your participation. If you're going to defeat your Goliath, you're going to have to have a strategy. You're going to have to gather your five smooth stones. You're going to have to do the practical things that God is asking of you, no matter how small. You're going to have to be persistent. You're going to have to gather up your weapons, the weapon of prayer and praise. You're going to have to put on that whole armor so that you can stay protected. Listen, God has amazing things for you. I pray that these five things have helped you gather the strength to keep going. I pray that on the other side of this, you will find so much peace and joy that it will be nothing for you to snuff out your Goliath, snuff out fear once and for all, kick it to the curb, make sure that they fear knows your name. I'm praying for you. I'm rooting for you. I know God has something amazing for you. And I thank you so much for watching this session. Have a great rest of your weekend and God bless.